And we, <laughs> we miss her. We miss her so much. So for those who have just been honored, please know from the bottom of our hearts, the very depths of our soul, how much we love you, how much we appreciate you, and how much we thank God for you. Let's give them another round of applause. Thank you. Well, at this time, I have the great honor and pleasure of introducing our speaker, and he promises to be brief. So don't think he's going to be, he promises to be brief. Our speaker is Anthony James Asman. Even though I'm his mother and I know a lot about him, I'd said I'd jot some things down just to make sure that I said some of those great things. Because sometimes, you know, people have done fantastic things and because we know them, we just kind of rush right on through that and just get on to the next part. So bear with me for just a moment. Anthony was born and raised in Daytona Beach, Florida. He was and has always been a scholar. From uh, Duke University testing when he was in elementary school where his, he tested beyond his grade level in every area, to uh, getting the principal's award almost every year, even in elementary school, getting straight A's, graduating from high school and Vanderbilt University, cum laude, uh, we need a round of applause for that. I think that's awesome. <laughs> and not only did he graduate cum laude, but he got a full, full, everything covered uh, ride at Vanderbilt University for those four, four uh, full years. Amen. Amen. In fact, we used to go visit him because uh, at Vanderbilt they had their own chef. <laughs> So we would go visit them. They have great meals. I tell you, it was awesome. Education has always been important to our family. Now, that was our mother. Our mother instilled that in us. So it's always been important to him as well. He's currently working on his uh, master's degree in business administration, and he should finish that in December of this year while working full time. Amen? He works full-time right now at Miami University in Ohio as Assistant Athletic Director, Sales and Marketing Director, and those positions he has held uh, for about nine years. Now, he will tell you that what he loves most, though, about his job and the job he held prior to the one that he's in now as the uh, Brand Manager and Associate Director for seven years for Florida Citrus Sports in Orlando is the impact that he has been able to have on young lives especially young males. And how many of you know how key and important it is that we impact positively the lives of our young males? Helping them to dream what others may consider impossible dreams, developing plans and working the plans to fruition. Now he did that in his senior year in developing a successful and much enjoyed alternate prom in his senior year, he didn't go to the regular prom. He developed an alternate prom for those who could not afford to go to the regular prom put on by the school system. And he got the teachers to help him, he got other students to help him, and they were able to have a very, very successful alternate prom. He did it in college when he started a community youth mentor program, and he convinced other college athletes to work with him and go in the community and be a mentor to the young men in that community. Uh, helping them with everything from getting their, their uh, going to the barbershop, to learning more athletic skills, uh, and doing their homework. He did it on his first job as in 1998 as associate director and coordinating what they call the Gridiron Classic with Team Florida, Team USA for three plus years, doing which, get this, over 175 college seniors were able to successfully be signed to NFL contracts. Can I get an amen on that? Now, for those of you who know anything about Florida, we have something called the Florida Classic, where BCU and FAMU play against each other. Well, he was associate director of that, which is called the Walt Disney World Florida Classic, and they had over six consecutive years of sellouts of over 70,000 people. Amen? 
Amen, amen. And he continues a lot of this even now after 16 years of working with students uh, from the college, working with students who are uh, underprivileged youth in the community to give them the opportunity to learn, to train, to develop and experience life and job opportunities not really uh, usually envisioned by them or afforded to them before. He's a recipient of numerous awards, including being inducted into the Mid-Tennessee chapter of the College Football Hall of Fame. And he was two years in a row the chair of the Oxford Chamber of Commerce, and he received their Outstanding Chairman Leadership Award. He was the first black, he was the youngest, and he was the first one to serve a two-year term. They were so impressed with him. Let's get a round of applause for that. I'm very proud of this young man, as I am of both of my sons. I can say so much more, but we want to hear from him, right? <laughs> Praise God. But he has lived a life that's been uh, inspiring, challenging, and empowering to others. Therefore, without further comments, I proudly introduce the beloved brother of Curtis, our beloved son, who's the grandson of Willabel Frazier, our honoree, the great-great-grandson of Bannerford Desishire of the Original Seven, our speaker for this 11th biennial banquet, Anthony James Asma. Let's hear it. <laughs> I'll be brief, but before I get started, um, and this is probably the toughest speech that I've ever given, uh, and you guys will learn more about that as far as what Willabel Frazier meant to this family. But before I uh, get into that, I know this meant a lot to you. This weekend meant a lot to you, and uh, everything that you talked about, there's no way I would have been able to do that without your love. So what Curtis did, your other brother, I won't take credit for it. He got you a spa treatment, head to, head to toe, massage. I think the women say Manny Petty. I got coached on that. And we want to do that for you because I know what this meant to you, what it meant to Camille, and what it meant to Dolores as far as us being able to have Grandma smile down on us because we know what this meant to her. I'm going to need my cousin Stacy and Tamara to be up with, here with me. Uh, I've tried to write this speech so many times, and every time I started crying, uh, late last night at around 4 a.m., I started crying, got out of bed, Adrian didn't know what was going on, and I just got to the point where it's not about coming from up here, it's about coming from here. Yes. And uh, what I want you guys to know, and before I get into it, I want to thank Sherman and, and Margaret for finding my grandmother. Because this, this right here, this helped complete this family. We leaned on our grandmother for so much, so much, but we never could get to anywhere where we were going without knowing where we've been. And uh, when I think about this family and the strong women that's in this family, oh my gosh. I'm telling you, these two behind me uh, growing up, and our grandmother was our babysitter, as, our, as Dolores and Camille, as well as my mom was doing what they needed to do to provide for us, whether that was taking another shift. That woman you see right there, she'll work 16 hours straight for her kids. 16 hours straight. The one in the back, is nothing she wouldn't do for any of us, the Lord's. And then my mom and trying to balance two boys before she met this great man, Larry, keeping us on the right track and having two black males never being pulled over by the police and never being put in jail. I mean, please give my three aunts, my two aunts and my mom, Ronald and Paul. family reunions was so important to my grandmother. Three, three areas that was really, really stood out. The first one being, it renewed her soul. When she would come back from this trip, we all knew to get in line, we can get whatever we want. <laughs> For those who don't know, my grandmother was a really good chef. 
I'm talking about so good. Me and my brother used to put it in Ziploc bags and go sell it at school <laughs> with a slice of bread. Oh, the spaghetti was unbelievable, I'm telling you. Them, them Italians been lying, because us black people know how to make some spaghetti. <laughs> it also renewed her faith. Uh, it, it, it strengthened her faith to be around all of us. And when you think about us coming from descendants of slaves and where we are now, oh my gosh. I mean, give yourselves a hand up, please. I think at the end of the day, it provided all of us a purpose. This thing is bigger than us individually. And collectively, we got a purpose for why we do what we do and why we have to make sure whatever that last name is, it represents the Ford family. It put things in perspective for me. I want to give you a quick story about my grandma's tough love. I had a choice to make. I had three schools that I had visited and I needed to make a decision. I got some insight from my mom. I got some insight from some coaches. I called up my grandma, she told me to drive over. I made the mistake and I said <laughs> to my grandmother, I don't think I'm good enough. She looked at me. I didn't know whether to run because I think she couldn't have caught me. I think she couldn't have caught me. I get out and pray because Usually if you're praying, you won't get a beat. <laughs> but I stood there and she stood there and looked at me. And she said, it can't be any maybes. You owe too many. Too many people have sacrificed for you. Too many folks love you. And I hope this is really hitting home with the young people in the room. It's the reason why we set this weekend up the way we set it up. It needed to have an educational component to it. Because we wouldn't have got where we were, where we were to where we are now without having some form of education. It doesn't mean, doesn't mean college, but it means something to make a living. So we had to go to BCU. We would have been selling this day short for our young people. We have to keep this going if we didn't do that. And we had to have a design that didn't have waves and sunshine and showing Daytona Beach. We had to have it to where it had the roots from Africa building this strong tree with all our branches on it. We complete now. There are no excuses. We just heard about a lady that had a dollar and 50 cent in a dream that built a school that's educating kids every day. That's why this is so important. And y'all gotta be honest with you, I miss, I miss some reunions. And I regret it, but I won't miss another one. And if I get another job, it's gonna be in the contract every two years. And the house is going to be gone, right? But she stood up and she looked at me and she said, nah, you can't take the easy road because none of your ancestors took the easy road. So I went to the all-white school. And they know, my parents know, after that first year, I packed up everything and I was ready to come home. On that drive home, Mama said, nah, you can go somewhere, but you ain't coming here. <laughs> so I think I got back probably to uh, Chattanooga, and then turn it back around and headed back to Nashville and toughed it out. But that's important, and that's why family is important. You know, for my aunt to send me a book about black men, and the first page I read was, you got two choices. One, you either work from the neck down and have somebody control your destiny, or you work from the neck up and control your own. And when I come here, I see role models. I see something that meant something to me. That first year where I was at the reunion, being at Walterboro, grandma grabbing me by the ear, because she said, don't make this feel like an obligation, this is a must. I mean, it really meant something to me. And it means something to me every day. So what I ask is, we prayed, we played, and some of you played a lot more than others. <laughs> but please understand, we got to stay together. There's not a day that goes by. All right. There's not a day that goes by where I don't think about my grandma and the sacrifice that she made for all of us. This is how she lives through us. And it's amazing how one person can say something that helped bridge the gap for everything else. 
We're driving from Orlando, and I say to Adrian, let's go visit the grave. She mentions to me, 